Thank you for joining us at The Artist Tree. I'm Lonita Cook, your host, and joining us today is John Stafford II, Director of Choral Music Activities at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Thank you so much, John, for being here. Thanks for having me. Woohoo! I'm very excited <laughs> to have you here because you are a musician, mm -hmm. not just a musician, mm -hmm. but you're into choral music. Mm -hmm. Nice. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about uh, your background, who you are as a man, and every or who you are, mm -hmm. and um, tell us about boyhood in Danville, Illinois. That's where you're from, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. So, pretty much where I'm from, I'm, I just come from a middle class family. Uh huh. So, both working parents. My mother worked at University of Illinois Human Resources. My father worked um, was a foreman at General Motors. And nice. so, in terms of me getting into music at that age, um, what I did was I was in, my mom, was a member of a missionary Baptist church, so wow. she had me sing in choir when I was four years old. And so I've been singing in choir since I was four, but at the time couldn't read music. I was just in choir singing. Right. So and was so, this gospel music that you yeah, were? Yeah, it's gospel music. Mm -hmm. Do you so, still do gospel music or um, just not really any? Not really anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm still interested in it, you know. I still listen to it sometimes. Of course. And, you know, of course I have it, because that's where my roots are from, really. Right. But um, I've expanded to more, into other types of music as well. But in terms of the boyhood, that's how it, it all started. Mm -hmm. And it really stayed that way in terms of singing. I just, I've sung in elementary school, mm -hmm. in middle school, and in high school. And some, and as I got older, I started singing in different types of groups. So mm -hmm. I even done barbershop. Well, what, what, well, what kind of town is Danville? I mean, uh, the is town it, itself is one, it's one of those industry towns. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, it's one of those towns that uh, 20, 30 years ago, um, it was thriving because it had several industries. It was right. a factory town. So uh, right. it had General Motors and it had a Heister plant, it had a Teapack plant, a Quaker Oaks plant, wow. and so on. So, um, but some of those plants have left, so the town's gotten a little bit smaller mm -hmm. and since my childhood. So it was that type of town. Um, in terms of music, though, it had a decent music scene, though. Actually, I have um, several older relatives still living um, in their 70s and 80s, and they talk about mm -hmm. how Danville, at the time, a lot of, in the 20s and 30s, um, big bands would go through a town. For example, mm. Duke Ellington and Ella Fitzgerald, they performed there. Seriously? Because, um, yes, they performed, because they so have a few what, theaters there and they performed, yes. So, uh, well, I was going to ask, mm -hmm. did they share with you what the draw to Danville was for these big name artists like the I, war? I think the draw was um, the factories themselves. I think it drew uh, quite a few people, especially minorities. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think that was the major draw. And since you have this large market of Minorities, mm -hmm. you know, you have that's a where band you go. like Duke Ellington would sure. go through, you know, sure. and it was a, and also Danville is a stop between Chicago and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. It's not straight diagonally, but um, you could still it's a still a good stop. It's about two hours sure. each way. Sure. So I think that helped a lot too, and it's an hour just west of Indianapolis. So it's kind of a good stop for all those cities, kind so of middle ground. Was there so, an yeah. artist like that who influenced your own mu music? I mean, coming from Danville, mm -hmm. where these names have performed, mm -hmm. and your own relatives telling you firsthand tales about. So, what? How did that influence your own? Well, uh, for music? me going to music, um, I think a lot of it. Had, I guess I'm influenced by multiple areas, by multiple people. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, I mean, my mo mother listened to gospel. My father likes blues. Mm -hmm. My father was a big B.B. King fan. Nice. And so I was listening to blues and gospel as I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I was exposed to classical music in, in middle school and high school. Fabulous. And so, um, so, so that's where that came in. Um, a bunch of my peers, listen, of course, listen to hip hop. Sure. So I'm a, even to this day, I'm still an old school hip hop fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, you Me know. Too. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, so I was just influenced by all these different areas. By the time I got to high school, about like, around late high school. So when you say yes. areas, you mean uh -huh. different genres of music? Or yeah, when so you say areas, do you mean geographically? I should say people. Mm -hmm. Different people expose me to different types of music, mm -hmm. different genres mm -hmm. of music. That's mm -hmm. what I should say. Mm -hmm. And so um, in terms of jazz, I get, I was exposed to jazz, actually. I mean, mm -hmm. it was interesting to hear these stories from my older relatives, mm -hmm. aunts and uncles, but mm -hmm. um, also in terms of jazz music, 
Um, I started to listen to that in high school, and that's when I really decided I really wanted to go into music. When well, I was in high school, I was a big Quincy Jones fan. So it was, was jazz that like pulled it, you in. Yeah, for the most part. For the most yeah, part. I mean, I was always singing, and I right, was actually Right, you have an eclectic but, background, but mm -hmm. it, it was the jazz that said, come on in, right? Yes, I was interested in it. I was interested in classical and jazz. And mm -hmm. you know, at the time, I was a really... I was a big Duke Ellington fan, even mm -hmm. though there's much more, even though that's the older jazz now, and there's much newer stuff out now, and even when I was at And that the sound age, has evolved, Yeah, right. well, of course, mm -hmm. right. like any, other, any art would, so. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's kind of the gist of it. That's kind of my background. Well, um, we've talked about uh, the gospel, the jazz, mm -hmm. even the classical, but I know that you also have a background in electronic music, mm -hmm. right? Well, what that, is that? That what? comes a little bit later. That's, mm -hmm. um, so electronic music came in. Um, I have a graduate degree mm -hmm. in music. So, um, so my bachelor's is from Millican University. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, that's a uh, degree in music business. So I studied music industry and everything. Okay. But getting on to the electronic music, um, I, there was a short period of time, about three or four years, where I wrote some electronic music. It was kind of avant-garde classical music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it used some of the same... Uh, some of the same equipment, some of the same software as would be used in the music industry, right? Such as Kanye West or Dave Matthews Band. It was the, some of the same technology would be used to write this classical music that was avant-garde and be performed in different festivals internationally. Nice. So, and what um, at what time is this? Like in the nineties or? It's early two thousands. Oh, really? Like early two thousands. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and so for my graduate degree, I studied composition. I have mm -hmm. a degree in composition. So I studied Fantastic. both. Oh, thanks. Very <laughs> Thank nice. You. So I studied um, classical music. And at the time I studied classical music, I was learning how to write for orchestras and choirs mm -hmm. and band. And, but at the same time, I, I was still learning about how to write for a jazz band and, and also learning this electronic music. Sure. How to work so with So you said that the electronic music is influenced by the same type of technology that influences a Dave Matthews Band, mm -hmm. Kanye yeah, West. Popular music, yes. So when you say technology, are we talking about like computer technology or are we talking about mm -hmm. um, like uh, the improvements in the instruments themselves. I mean, because when I think of electronic music, I always think of that character from Fame who was in that room, you know, oh, right, with right. everything around him. I and haven't thought about that in <laughs> 20 years. You know? so, but so. would that be an accurate uh, image of electronic music? or See, that's electronic music now is so broad. That's one area of it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, there's other areas of it now. There's other genres of it, mm -hmm. of electronic music. It's there, it, that's like a topic, and now there's other subtopics. Right. That's like one of the subtopics, right. what you're talking about. So, yeah, but that's it's kind, kind of It's kind of forged idea. itself yeah. as, as its own industry. Yeah, now. exactly. So, so. Um, is it like... Ex widely accepted by the music industry, or and I mean, in, in particular, the classical music industry, or is it still something that's kind of underground? Is it still no, alternative? No, it's it's, um, it's growing. It's mm -hmm. more of um, classical music is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, there's quite a few classical composers and classical musicians. You don't get you don't see the mo same money you would see if you were mm -hmm. doing popular music, if right? You were of course, rock popular mm -hmm. music or anything like that. But um, there is a field for it, and mm -hmm. there is a market for it. So the class, so at the time, it was just a kind of, I want to say a phase, but I guess a chapter in my development, my education, mm -hmm. where I, three or four years, I just went through, and I took some classes on how to work with technology and how to work with electronic music. Nice. I took some of those courses, and that just helped me evolve into a better musician. And so, so <laughs> while you're talking about um, your education, mm -hmm. What is music education about? I mean, because somebody who's a musician, who's meant to be a musician, they can learn by ear or they can mm -hmm. teach themselves or, you know, take piano lessons when they're six, you know, for a couple years. What is it about getting a bachelor's degree, a master's degree? What is that about and how does that influence music? Well, to go back a little bit, at the time I was getting those degrees, mm -hmm. when I was when I was getting my bachelor's degrees, you know what I wanted to do when I um, was getting my bachelor's degrees? Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to study music industry studies. Right. And so 
uh, I wanted to be the next Quincy Jones. So I wanted to learn how to write music and work in the <laughs> right? studio. You know, that's what I wanted to do when I was 17, right. you know. so Make the night uh, Michael Jackson, right? Yeah, so, so I just wanted to do that. You know, I was mm-hmm. just interested in that. And as I got older, the three, four, five years later, I realized I wanted to work more in classical music. Mm-hmm. I just felt more comfortable mm-hmm. in that area. And I felt... Um, Why is that? Honestly, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I think after, you know, once you go through college, um, a lot changes once you go through college. Of course. You know, of course. <laughs> I mean, you're getting, I mean, it's a new phase in life. And it's like transition mm-hmm. from high school to real world, you mm-hmm. know. So a lot, and I spent extra time in college because I went straight through for six years, you know, okay. to getting two degrees. So um, I grew a lot in that area, mm-hmm. you know. And so the idea was just... Um, I just wanted to work more in classical music. I knew that. And after a while, um, those main areas to work in classical music, either you're going to teach or perform. So I tried my hand in teaching, and I ended up really enjoying it. Mm. So I didn't really know what I wanted to be until I had my first teaching job. Okay. So, which I thought was interesting, but I always knew I wanted to do music somehow. So, find a way make it in. plain for me. What do you want to be in terms of your musical career? What I'm doing it right now. So. As the director mm-hmm. of Nice. So I wanted to be, I, I say it from about, I found her around 2021, 20, I wanted to be a professor. So um, so this is my, so I've taught at part-time at three other colleges. Mm-hmm. And so this is my first full-time college job. And so I'm doing it right now. Okay. I wanted to um, not only be a professor, but I wanted to have my own program to develop. And so, um, so I'm where would you like to be a professor? I mean, you're gonna you come from Milken, Mm -hmm. and you're here now. Where would you like to end up, if you will? End up um, tenure, first of all. Uh, I know that's right. (laughs) um, um, No, but seriously, um, let's just see where let's just see See where where it goes. Well, what attracted you to the department here? What attracted you to uh, the choral department at KCKCC? Honestly, uh, at the time, it was about a year and a half ago, Mm -hmm. they just had a job opening. Mm -hmm. And at the time, because I was at um, um, my position before here, I was teaching at Millican, I was part-time. And while I was teaching at Millican, at the same time, I started my PhD Mm -hmm. at University of Illinois. So I'm still not done with that yet, but I was doing the coursework to that. And so after a while, I was ready to look for a new job to create a new chapter. And right. so I spent two years really looking for two years looking for looking a job. Looking for a place. Yeah, and so they had an opening here. I, you know, I did research about Kansas City because I didn't know anything about it. Right. I've never been How have you liked so, it? Oh, it's great. I love it. It was great. So, yeah, <laughs> right. so, so, um, but, you know, I so and I came out here, interviewed. Mm-hmm. I got along with everybody really well. Everybody's nice. real nice. And um, so, and they, gave me the offer. Okay. So I decided to come here. So. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to take a break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to get a little bit more into your education. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us at The Artistry. We will be right back. that the average Social Security benefit is only $780 a month? I didn't know that. Did you know that most people will spend 20 years in retirement? I didn't know that. Did you know that a 40-year-old who saves $20 a week can have $75,000 when they retire? I didn't know that. There's a lot you might not know. To get free information about savings, visit our website or call this number. I know what to do now. Welcome back to The Artistry. I am Lonita Cook, your host, and we are here talking with John Stafford II. He is Director of Choral Music Activities at Kansas City, Kansas Community College, and he is um, very into education and musical education, and that's one thing that we left out talking about is Mm -hmm. all of your educational pursuits. Now, you are currently going for your DMA, Mm -hmm. right? What is that? It's um, Doctoral Musical Arts. Mm -hmm. And is so that like a PhD? That oh, that's similar to a PhD, mm-hmm. but it's the music side of a PhD. Mm-hmm. And so the difference between DMA and PhD is PhD is more research oriented, mm-hmm. where you do much more writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all research and writing. And DMA is 
it's more talent oriented. It's more oh, really? performance oriented. You do some of the writing of a PhD, but not to the same level of writing. So. Well, when do you have to write like a, what is it, a thesis or mm -hmm. dissertation? You do a yeah. dissertation. Yeah, you have to thesis write dissertation. Thesis is for master's, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 dissertation for both. But mm -hmm. the one of the differences is the size of the dissertation. Mm -hmm. For a PhD, you will have to write about 200, a 200 page dissertation. Whereas a DMA, it would only be 60 to 100, but then you have to perform on the right, recital as well. Right. And, so and does it matter what you're getting your DMA in, or is uh, it yes. kind of a general degree? No, it's not general. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty specialized. Once you get the master's and doctoral mm -hmm. level, it's, it's quite specialized. Even in music. Mm -hmm. Yes, even in music. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a lot of people, like orchestral musicians, they study tuba performance. There's degrees in that, or something wow. like that. Wow. Um, okay. For me, um, my master's degree was in composition. It was mm -hmm. just composing. So all I did was compose music four hours a day. So is that where what you're did. getting your DMA in? No, my DMA is something different, actually. It's in choral conducting and literature. So choral conducting and mm -hmm. literature. So it's a performance degree of conducting choirs, learning how to conduct choirs, how to run a rehearsal, mm -hmm. and also learn about six, 700 years of choral repertoire. Wow. So um, studying that repertoire. So from wow. the 1300s, 1400s, and so on. Very nice. So, so that's, what the, that's what the <laughs> degree is at. So. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, so once you get a degree, the, once you get the DMA, how mm -hmm. will you use that to advance your career? Are you, you are wanting, because you said you want to be a professor, do you also want to be a conductor? Mm -hmm. Or? Um, you can use it in several ways. Mm -hmm. the, the good thing about education is mm -hmm. some people think you don't need a certain level of education. I right. disagree with that. I think it just depends on what you value. And so for me, well, mm -hmm. even in general, speaking in general, I think the more education you have, just the more options you have mm -hmm. in general. So um, I'm at the job where I want to be at for a long period of time. Sure. So I'm already there. Mm -hmm. But um, but while I stay <laughs> at this job, I mean, other opportunities can open up. If mm -hmm. I didn't have advanced degrees, I wouldn't be able to have those opportunities. Absolutely. And so, um, me getting this DMA degree, mm -hmm. it allows for me. It allows for me to have other opportunities, avenues yes, to exactly. pursue. And, and so, let me ask you: this is this is something, and I don't want to sound offensive by any means. Sure. But um, I, I used to play an orchestra. Okay, what did you, you play? I played the upright bass. Were you any good? I was awesome. Oh, okay. That's so, right. Yeah, that's good. So, right. So. I thought I was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my mom thought I was awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, very um, cool. Uh, and I got to play with the Kansas City Symphony um, really? student, uh, okay. guest student, uh, okay. one year. I think my senior year in high school, oh, okay. many years ago. Can you still play? Um, here and there, but I, I haven't kept up with it. But what I wanted to ask you was, you know, we had a conductor of mm -hmm. our orchestra, mm -hmm. and it was a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. uh, conductors always seem so energetic. But I always thought, once you know, like, um, how to read notes and mm -hmm. beats and measures, and that it's like the easiest job, mm -hmm. right? So tell me why it's not like the easiest job. Um, because to get to a higher level, you, the expectations are higher. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you could just need, read notes and rhythms, but mm -hmm. by the time you consider yourself a professional, mm -hmm. you know, um, you can, for example, say a professional orchestral musician, mm -hmm. they're expected to play without missing any rhythms, mm. any notes. I mean, they start out making. 60 grand a year and Ooh. some of them make well over 100 grand wow and stay in that position if you look at the symphonies from chicago or new york or mm -hmm. la some of those players make over a hundred thousand dollars and if they miss rhythms and notes they don't have a job anymore because there's wow. hundreds of musicians that can just that come can in come and, in and yeah. just so the wow. expect so that's just an example you know it's about not only precision and yeah precision being excellent. precise and yeah, and being really awesome. good at your craft. So, <laughs> so I mean, so okay. anyway, well, that's the idea. Offer, could you offer some tips to our viewers who might sure. be interested mm -hmm. in um, beginning a career in choral music? How would they get involved as a vocalist, as a composer, as a 
writer? Well, it, actually, you know what? I would just like to talk about just being in music in general. Mm -hmm. um, even if you, whether you want to do hip hop or country or rock or whether sure. you want to do classical or jazz, I just think it's important. The more information you know, mm -hmm. then the more you could do things yourself, mm -hmm. the better off, especially in music, the better off you'll be. So for example, um, the, more, the more you know about working in a studio and keeping up with technology, um, if you could play at least one instrument, mm -hmm. studying piano, I think piano is probably the hardest instrument to learn. It is? So, yes, I think it's one of the hardest. And it takes one the longest to understand. I always so, thought it would be like the harp. Okay, that may be <laughs> but, <laughs> so, like, piano is the second one probably. Okay. So, um, but, but studying music in college, every music student has to take at least two years of piano and pass a piano exam halfway wow. through college, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's in so college curriculum. So what benefit do you get from learning the, I mean, it's just like the foundation to have or, mm -hmm. I mean. Well, let's take, let's take a high school student who's interested in music. Mm -hmm. They might not even do it in college or whatever, but they're interested in being on American Idol or they're interested right. in being a songwriter mm -hmm. or being in a band. Let's take it from that point. Um, if you can write out music, then that, that's it's really helpful if you can write out music uh, because right. it gives you it gives you an extra skill to be able to do right you know uh, it's it like that it. part in the movie Drumline have you seen it yes yes he was like a prodigy you know he yeah. was brilliant but he couldn't read but he couldn't read yeah music, right? but he couldn't read and so that was a handicap he had to mm -hmm. get somebody to help him and that's exactly. what I'm talking about that's really good that's a great example okay. and so and so that's one thing I think. A lot of songwriters mm -hmm. you know, today, a lot of songwriters today, professional ones mm -hmm. that are really high on the pay scale, mm -hmm. they all play three, four instruments. They sure. don't just play, they don't just sing. Right. They can play piano and drums and bass and guitar, mm. a lot of them. And so and being able, and also knowing technology where you can demo your own stuff. You could put, lay down your own drum part or your own right. piano part, bass part, whatever. Mm -hmm. So the more you know, the more information you know, if you can write, if you could perform one or two more instruments, if you know technology, mm -hmm. and if you just understand the industry, the more information you the know. The trends in the yeah, industry. Exactly. Nice. So the more information you know, the better off you'll be. So that's my advice to up-and-coming musicians, whether it's classical or whether it's popular music. Yeah, it's um, kind more, of the yeah, same. Yeah, just, just as much education as you can have. Yeah, and, and just much and just much information. Nice. So, so uh, you, uh, in terms of your accomplishments, sure. two of the accomplishments when I was researching your background mm -hmm. that was really impressive to me, um, you received an honor from La Primavera and La Havana. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a music festival for electronic music, mm -hmm. right? And then another one from uh, the fourth edition of the Pierre Schaefer mm -hmm. in Italy, mm -hmm. right? And these are international competitions mm -hmm. and you submitted work and you received honors mm -hmm. from these competitions. Can you talk about the conviction that it takes to submit your work to these highly competitive, mm -hmm. international, highly prestigious mm -hmm. contests? Um, let's see, the festival in Havana, Cuba was um, pretty much, it's a festival that happens every other year. Mm. And it's all of these composers that submit electronic music, classical avant-garde electronic music to the festival. And it's performed down there for about four or five days every two years. So it's just four or five day festival. So wow. my work was, I didn't attend the festival actually because of other commitments sure. at the time. But um, but you still received the honor. Yeah, I received the honor. Right. Yeah, so I still received the honor and my music was performed down there. Nice. And so, um, and in terms of applying, the Italy competition was, um, it was just an international competition that they have and I was a finalist. I was in the top 10 out of about 500 people. Right? So, uh, um, <laughs> That's uh, so, awesome. Yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. And so, um, so anyway, so that was quite a few years ago. That was about six, seven years ago now. So uh, the Italy competition. And that wasn't a festival where my music was actually played there. I just submitted it to this organization. But it was so, still included mm -hmm, in uh, mm -hmm. a, a compilation of the winners, yes, right? Yes, it was. I think yes. that is a grand accomplishment. Well, thank you. So, so what does it take to, to involve yourself um, in something like that? Well, how do you really know you just have to you're put yourself good enough? Up. You don't. You just put yourself out there, mm -hmm. and so and that's what I try. That's what I want to tell my students. I try it mm -hmm. more, a little bit this semester, this past year, and this past semester. But I want to more um, tell my students that 
Um, you really just have to be a go-getter. For example, when I have students come in or sing, I'll give you a quick example. When students come in or sing, you mm -hmm. know, they're 18, you know, they're just out of high school, they're freshmen, and they're like shy and everything, and I just get on their case, you know. <laughs> so, and get I'm, at I'm, it, right? I'm, I'm telling you, you can't, you can't sing shy around me. You can't do that. Right. And the, the idea behind that, there's a bigger mindset behind that. And the idea is that you really do have to be a go-getter. Mm -hmm. go -getter. If you want to be successful in anything you do, you just have to go out there and learn how to become it and take it. And then, know, so. well, can you also talk about the attitude mm -hmm. um, surrounding uh, submitting your work? Mm -hmm. uh, how polished do you have to be? How ready does your work have to be before you submit it? It's one of those things where you just, after a while, I think after you do a certain art for a while, mm -hmm. after you do, I think after you do anything for a while, you know, you kind of know in your heart if you're at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Some people have an ego and might think they're higher than they really are. But, <laughs> right. You know, but you know you're at a certain level, I think, after you do something for so long. So you just have to have the percent, I don't know, you just have to go out there and submit it and just do it. Just doing things. Nothing is as hard as it seems. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it might seem difficult for me to muster up the courage to send Ex something out. Exactly. But it's not that bad. I mean, the worst thing they could do, they'll just send you a letter saying, we won't accept this at this time. Right. And so you just got to muster up the energy and just keep on going. That could be you, discouraging. How do you, right. Feel, how do you stay encouraged? You know, you know, for something like that, especially if you do something internationally, if you try to do this internet, if I submitted a poem to the international competition where a thousand people applied, I mean, the, what are my odds, you know? Right. So I'll give you a better example. All these people that play the lottery all the time, <laughs> you know, they're, are they really expecting to win? You yeah, know? my I mean, odds so, have not been good. I've been yeah. playing since I'm 12. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, but people lose every day in a lottery. Right. But they still play. It's the same type exactly. of thing. You just keep on going. So. Okay. It's the same idea. So just keep on going and don't be shy about we are gonna doing what you want. We're going to wrap it up. Sure. Um, but I do want to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. What uh, legacy would you like to leave to the college, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, as well as our city? In terms of my legacy, mm -hmm. what I really want to do, it's all, number one, it's just about educating students, mm -hmm. trying to show, since what, I, since my classroom is all about rehearsing music mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is to expose these students to as much different types of music as possible. Mm -hmm. They come into my program knowing a certain amount of music already. Right. By the time they leave, they're on note twice or three times as much of different types of music that are out there. Excellent. It's about educating, because that's just what I do. I, my, I'm supposed to educate them on vocal music, so that's what... That's what you do. Yeah, and so my students will... The idea is my students will be exposed to a wide variety of music and that they'll have such a good experience, they'll, be, they'll want to go on and have the courage to study music to pursue on a, high, at a higher level. So. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, John, for being thank a guest on much. the show. I've had a wonderful time. I did too. And thank you for joining us at The Artist Tree. We'll see you next time.